Hello, I'm Mike Liggins. Airmen and women from Norfolk are being honoured tonight after spending three months in Afghanistan. Some of 4B squadron from RAF Marham only just made it back in time. They arrived on HMS Albion in Portsmouth last night. Felicity Simper is in Downham Market now. Felicity. Well, Susie, welcome to Downham Market. And what a fantastic sun-soaked evening it is here. Now, there's about 150 members of Nine Squadron and their support teams receiving medals here this evening. And they really have had a fantastic turnout for support. Hundreds of people lining the streets here and clapping. Really couldn't have asked for a better evening for it. Now, they've had a rather unusual journey home because of that infamous ash cloud that's been causing all sorts of problems all over the place, not least of which to them. They arrived back late last night at Portsmouth on HMS Albion. And a few minutes ago, the RAF station commander Captain Rochelle told me how they got back. It's been a bit of an adventure for them to, uh, to get home. Um, the guys will just sort of uh, carry on with it and just um, make do. It has a bit of effect on the family and the loved ones and the children normally waiting at home. But yeah, a bit of a trip into Cyprus and a four day wait in Cyprus, followed by a flight into uh, Spain, into Saragossa, followed by a coach move to Santander, and they've come back via our Navy colleagues in HMS Albion. Well, they've had what's been described as an excellent tour of duty out in Afghanistan. And just a few minutes ago, we saw them marching up the roads here, everyone clapping, really excited to see them back. I think you can see some of those pictures now, really dramatic scenes here. It's lovely. Now, these campaign medals are only given out once to individuals after their first tour. So it's a very special day for them, and not least of which their relatives as well, some of whom I spoke to earlier have been here since 11 o'clock this morning waiting to see them. And they really couldn't have asked for a better evening and a better day for it. Back to you. Thank you very much, Felicity. 600 jobs are being lost in Essex. The energy company E.ON is closing its call centre in Rayleigh in June. It follows a discussion with the union's managers, say they'll be supporting workers over the coming months. Harlow Council has paid £4,500 in compensation after it delayed fixing a leaking roof for 18 months. A report by a local government ombudsman found it had a negative impact on the life of the family involved. The council says it recognised its failings and has now made improvements. 66 years ago today, the 10-man crew of an American bomber died on the Suffolk coast. They were coming back from a raid and were minutes from home when they were hit by German fighters and crashed at Kessingland. Today, a special service was held in the village to remember their sacrifice. Many people in Kessingland know the story about the day the American Liberator crashed. But John Blowers saw it with his own eyes. He was 11 years old at the time. You just looked up and then one minute there was all this machine gun fire and aeroplanes over the next minute, whew, like that, the whole thing. All right, Kevin, two gentlemen here I'd like you to meet. It's a poignant day for John, who, with other locals, has raised money to help commemorate the tragedy and track down relatives of the crew. Most haven't been able to get here because of grounded flights, but Bill Boffman has made it. His uncle was the pilot. It's an abstraction when you're in the States and you hear, yes, you were shot down. But when you come and have all this ancillary information, uh, really, really emphasizes the fact that Gene really died for a reason and these people really appreciate it. This afternoon at the parish church, villagers, visitors and veterans came together to remember those who lost their lives. The service was led by the Bishop of Norwich. Outside sits a commemorative stone bearing the names of the crew and paid for by local people. As part of today's service, it was dedicated by the bishop in the hope that we always remember. I've always thought, you know, one day perhaps I may personally be able to say to an American, thank you. Simple as that. And did as the day. Kevin Birch, BBC Look East, in Kessingland. Three teenagers have been arrested after lead was stolen from a church hall in Bury St Edmunds. It was taken from St John's Street in the early hours of this morning. Two 19-year-olds and an 18-year-old who all live in the town are being questioned by police. The Canaries could have a civic reception in Norwich after winning promotion to the championship. Delia Smith confirmed in a live web chat on the Norwich City official site that they've been invited by City Hall. She says it depends on the manager, the team and the supporters. 
Tools and vehicles used by City Care have gone under the hammer for more than £300,000. The company was employed by the council to look after its housing in Norwich, but is selling off its equipment after losing its contract. Buyers from all over the country gathered for today's auction in Wyndham. It's the third one to be held. One of the oldest manufacturing companies in the region has won a Queen's Award for export. Crittle Windle Windows, which makes steel-framed windows, has doubled sales to America. It was set up in Essex 160 years ago. Crittle Windows. They've been installed in millions of homes and public buildings. Everything from the Houses of Parliament to the Titanic. And for more than 80 years, they've been made at Whittam in Essex. Competitors may have moved production abroad, but here the distinctive steel-framed windows still roll off the line. Now the firm's won a Queen's Award for exports. Our steel windows are popular in America. We supply to architect design properties throughout the US, also to the Ivy League colleges such as Yale and Princeton. And we've doubled our turnover and that's why we've won the Queen's Award for Enterprise. Crittall's modern designs really caught on between the wars. The founder's son, Francis Crittall, became a millionaire and built a model village for his staff at nearby Silver End. The homes have since been sold, but are still preserved with their Crittall windows. Today, the firm employs nearly 200 people and is kept busy replacing original windows which are feeling their age, not just in the UK, but throughout the world. We still manufacture the, the windows in much the same way as we did many years ago. A lot of manual work from a very committed workforce, a lot of whom have been here in excess of 30, 40 years. Today, another consignment of exports was being sent off to a rather prestigious address in New York. Richard Bond, BBC Look East, Whittam.